Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the A-Town Special, aka Singer Songwriter Night here at the A-Town Center. I'm your host, Hunter Knight. Again, you guys just heard wonderful music stylings by Michaela Cynthia and Dylan Helsley, and we're gonna do a little deep dive here and to kind of see what got them all into music and kind of go a deep dive in how we can build our scene up in the Anderson community area and also throughout Indiana. We really need the DIY scene and the local music scene to exist for all these wonderful artists. So my first question for you two tonight is kind of what influenced you? What keeps you guys, mo or, oh, rah, yep, that's the first question. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> what influenced you? What keeps you motivated to pursue music? And with this, you know, I'm not talking about famous musicians, but like families, friends, folks in your local community. As um, Cynthia, you grew up in uh, Goshen, Indiana, and Dylan, you grew up a little bit here in Anderson, Middletown, and you now reside in Muncie. So kind of with this question, I just kind of want to know what, uh, kind of helped you, who was your rocks, so to speak, in your musical endeavors? Okay. Um, I mean, I, I was raised in a very musical family, big family, 10 people, eight kids, two parents. Parents were like playing at weddings, getting paid to play at weddings. Uh, we were also uh, very much family centered around the Christian faith. So my storyline is probably one that people can relate to, but, um, so I was in the church a lot, so lots of gospel, lots of, um, I mean, modern church music uses a lot of open chord voicings, a lot of seconds and fourths, and you can probably hear that in some of the voicings that I have when I play, but I, I would, I just have to say my family. I, we grew up singing, we were that family that would harmonize happy birthday like well, to the point where it's kind of annoying. Um, and I have to say, yeah, it's definitely my family, specifically my dad who passed away, taught me how to learn uh, or play guitar and a little bit of piano as well. So, and I just kind of went off with it and just kept expressing through my songwriting, so. That's yeah. really cool to hear. So it's kind of, you were uh, kind of raised in your own kind of like the Partridge family in a sense. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, a little bit. It's kind of scary, but yeah, yeah. All right, well, what about you, Dylan? What kind of brought you to where you're at now? Um, I, I'd have to say uh, kind of, not, not similar, but still family. Uh, my uncle specifically, um, he was in a metal band whenever I was growing up. So my earliest memories of people making music, I was like three years old watching my uncle be a beast on the drums um, and in a metal band. So like that was, that was really, uh, you know, iconic for me in my formative years. Was like, you know, like that was the coolest thing in the world was for people to get up on stage and make, make music, so. Um, that kind of stuck with me, and then I, you know, whenever I got into band, which is where I actually started playing trumpet, um, that, that's, that's where I actually started my own musical adventure, so, um, I was really into ska and reggae music, so, um, I was a skateboarder, Tony Hawk's pro skater, uh, that, uh, that, that soundtrack that came out, uh, was, was huge for me, so, like, a lot of my, I mean, still, music I hold dear to my heart. Um, that's what really got me into like, I wanted to play trumpet because mm -hmm. of the ska bands that had the horns in them. So um, that really got me started and then so, kept so me going. You guys talk about family as being like the big influences. And when I introduce you guys, I introduce you guys as like multi genreist And what I think is really neat it's kind of in your bio that you're posting, I don't know if anyone else here read it uh, that was posted online, but like Dylan, you focused a lot of like blues, rock, reggae, ska, rap kind of influenced. And Michaela, when we were talking earlier uh, in between the break, right before Dylan was going on, um, you mentioned, you know, I told you I heard a lot of Americana, a lot of folk and your stuff. And it was really neat. And a lot of people, when you think of Americana and folk music, you think of more traditional, very slow, kind of slow down paces. A lot of people forget like bands, like even with their newer sound, like Mumford and Sons and people like um, the Lumineers, you can be upbeat. You can have that sound. I really like you bring this uniqueness and with your voice, you know, very much a powerhouse. And it's kind of unique hearing that kind of tied in with something more upbeat like folk and people aren't realizing that the two kind of blend together. Yeah. So kind of with you guys being multi uh, genres, what kind of puts you into that perspective of wanting to kind of bridge the gap with your music or like what kind of wanted you to kind of create what you create out of those kind of genres or you're still kind of playing with it now and don't really want to hold yourself into one specific category? I'll go ahead and kind of speak into it. Um, my music has pretty, has changed uh, a little bit drastically. Mm. Um, I started out pretty, pretty folky and very like, um, 
I don't know, Taylor Swift Evermore type. <laughs> um, like my first album uh-huh. was very intimate um, and acoustic and folky. Uh, the second album, it starts to broaden out into some just different type, like a little bit heavier Americana, mm-hmm. a little bit like where you tap into a little bit of rock, like Box of Lies is a little bit like heavy, heavy Americana mm-hmm. in, my, in my opinion, which I'm going to be playing here in a little bit. But um, now the second out al- or the third album that I have out has some jazzy stuff in there. It's It's got some groovy, funky things mm-hmm. in there. Um, it's which I think honestly is just, that's how I've grown up to kind of love. I now listen to a lot of like more R&B and um, uh, like honestly funk. I love Corey Wong. I love, yeah, yeah. I, I love like, um, I mean, yeah, some of the fun bands like um, Lawrence and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's more of what I have now, I would say, but it still is a part of my journey. So I'm trying to give at least tonight some of those different, you'll hear in the next, and the next set, a couple, like one that feels very jazzy. Mm-hmm. Like it, it feels very jazzy and then some others that just feel different. So I don't think I fit really in a box. I hope mm-hmm. people just kind of listen to the lyrics and kind of relate to that. And, and that's like the nice part, I feel like. Like sometimes for a lot of people, it takes something that sounds similar or something that's like unique that draws them with the instrumentation. And I feel like for me, like the instrument draws me in, but like I always try to find meaning or stuff within the lyrics. And not everyone, some people just like the vibe of what it is, like people just want to hear the vibes. Right. And what it's really nice like with some of your stuff that you guys, both of you, when you broke it down, like you entranced us in with the instrumentation, but like broke down the lyrically, it was really cool seeing like two sides of a coin, two different perspectives. And when we bring artists here, we want to showcase that. And it's really nice to see um, you both being multi genres but both different in your own right. Um, Dylan, now it's time to hear your side of the coin. <laughs> um, so, obviously, you know, from my set, you can tell I'm influenced by a lot of different things going on there. I mean, you know, I had a song that I would consider, you know, a straight bluegrass song, and then, you know, very next song was primarily hip hop. Um, so, I mean, you know, I guess that just comes from like, you know, how, how I was growing up, how how I got attached to music. I mean, you know, like I while I was, you know, watching my Uncle Sean in the metal bands, you know, like, it was the 90s, so, you know, some of the best hip-hop that ever came out was coming out during those times, so, you know, like, you had guys like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and, like, Wu-Tang Clan, like, you know, and so, like, you know, that that was stuff that I was hearing, too, and I, I just, you know, fell in love with that, too, so, like, I don't know, as a musician, um, to sit there and like tell myself like, okay, well, I- I'm gonna be a ska reggae musician. There'd just be so many core elements of my own musical taste that I'd be missing out. Like, you know, I love bluegrass, mm-hmm. so if I was just a ska reggae musician, I'd be missing out on my bluegrass. Or m- I love hip hop, I'd be missing out on my rap. So if you're gonna see me play, you're gonna see me play everything that I, I write down. And that's gonna come out in the form of bluegrass sometimes, or hip hop, or even, mm. even kind of metal breakdowns. Like I, ha- I have a song on my album I released last year that definitely has a metal breakdown mm-hmm. in the middle of it, so. And it's nice um, seeing when artists kind of blend the two together. Like I've seen reggae and metal infused, and it's really interesting to hear the dynamics that kind of come from that. I mean, you guys were both touching on with like your roots, especially when you were touching on with uh, going out more into like funk and R&B, and we are talking about you got your rock influence and stuff, is disco influenced a lot of rock. Okay. And, a lot of, and a lot of people don't realize that, and like you know, hip hop, you know, a lot of it was to me influenced from blues and also like early traditions of rock. And what I love with your style, and when people are instrumentalist and perform hip hop or rap, I feel like it's more approachable for a lot of people. My folks, can't do hip hop or rap. Like they just, it's too fast for my mom's like it sounds angry and stuff, but when it's stripped down and somebody's playing a guitar and we're singing, they're like, that's different. That hits some some kind of different in people's brainwaves. I feel like sometimes just like, it's just talking fast. It's not, and I'm like, well, it's encompassing more of a different genre. So I feel like it's more of the blend sometimes that makes it more approachable for people. Um, when it comes to expanding, what you guys kind of want to reach to, um, this will tie in with my next question is kind of what impact you guys want to make with your music and performances that you have on your local scene and the DIY, you know, journey for, you know, you're from Goshen, you have your roots, Anderson and Muncie. What do you want to bring back to those places or what do you want to have flourish here with this event you're taking place in Anderson, Indiana? Sure. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we're, we're on a rhythm. You're right. right. You're right. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, obviously I'm so happy to be here. I'm not an Anderson native, but I'm so thankful that Katie invited me down here. Um, uh, I know that there's a scene down here that I'd love to plug into, but yeah, I'm up in Goshen in the South Bend scene, trying to plug up into the Southern Michigan, all that stuff. But I, my main gig though, I'm a full-time band director and anyone that knows marching band in Indiana, it yeah. can get a little crazy. And that's my life. So like right now here in the fall, we're doing rehearsals four times a week and competitions on Saturdays. Mondays just happen to be one of my nights off. And I was like, yes, it's a Monday. I'm doing it. I'm going down to Anderson. I need to because I'm trying to keep this thing alive. Well, honestly, because I want to and I need to. But that's really my main impact right now is teaching with my kids and um, trying to allow them to hopefully escape in music. That's what it was for me when I was a kid. Uh, I was able to just walk through the doors and just kind of let everything drop off my shoulders and just play music and kind of forget um, all of the crap that can happen in teenagehood. And so, yeah, that's what I teach. I teach high schoolers. Um, and that's probably my primary impact. But through the singer-songwriter stuff, I have actually some apparel that I just conjured up. And on the back of the apparel says, listen inward, love outward. Uh, and about two years ago, I, was, I had an interview very similar to this, and he was like, what do you want people to feel? And that's what I said. I was just like, hopefully they listen to their gut, and they listen to their heart, and they feel motivated to love. And that's pretty much it. Like, there's no genre. I'm just hoping that through the lyrics they feel a human, and they feel that they can relate to it, and that they can express some sort of love to I feel others. like that's just a, a big impact that you just need in a community in general. Uh, one of my biggest things with doing this show when I tied in when I did the nightly special, which I've referenced in previous shows here as a radio show I did for a couple years, is always tie in with this is, you know, we're here to form a unity to jumpstart a better community and as always make your 1% count. And that's something I would like to tie in here. And the 1% thing is I feel like everyone, every human on this planet, we have a percent that we can put in. And my thing is put it into where it counts, put it in your community where you live, you know, where you eat, where you sleep. And it's really great that you're making an impact not only on kids, but giving them a creative outlet. Because my issue when I was in band, uh, I was in band for like 12 years, it just like, it killed me creatively. Totally. Um, yeah. You know, I was just going through the motion of scales. After scales, I'd go yeah. home sometimes and feel like I'm gonna be creative at like 16 years old, I'm gonna pull up my sax, I'm gonna play something. Yeah. I just was me doing scales for like 30 minutes. I'm just yeah. like, wow, I can't break the, you know, that cycle. So oh. it's really cool that, you know, yeah. you're giving kids an outlet and like yeah. sharing stuff with them. Uh, Dylan, so we're going to tie in to you now. Have you been feeling you've got some stuff here and that? What, uh, what are your thoughts on this topic we're talking about? Um, uh, honestly, the biggest thing uh, for me lately has been kind of making uh, a transition for like wh from who I am in the scene. So like, you know, I usually, usually I've just been, you know, an artist as a part of the scene, right? But uh, over the last couple of years, I've been playing a bigger role as like a promoter and a coordinator and a, an event planner or whatever. Yeah. So, um, like, I, I have my second uh, music festival, and uh, I think we have still we've had a couple bands drop off, but uh, we got uh, Katie Joe's yeah. playing with Casual Encounters this Saturday. Hey. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm also playing, and uh, we got my brother Taylor, who you've met. Yeah. Uh, he's coming in from uh, North Carolina. He, he moved. He moved. There. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So uh, um, it's it's gonna be a pretty big deal. Uh, we we're gonna have I think at least 20 musical acts there, um, or 19 musical acts, and then uh, two comedians actually. So, okay. And that, and that is so. As you folks know, this is happening in Muncie, Saturday the 16th this coming weekend, and that is at the Water Bowl, isn't it? Right, right. And it starts the at 5 o'clock? Yep, yep, yep. And, there'll, and there'll be uh, camping available, um, games, uh, com, con, costume contest. Uh, 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 I mean, we're, we're just and you're basically talking, just having as much fun as we can. When you're trying to promote, promote music to go on like later, and you want to promote people to stay camping, so they're looking at having stuff going on until about like 2 or 3 in the morning. Yeah. And they're looking at like, having a DJ and stuff kind of happen there. It's cool, because like, what I've heard about the Water Bowl and the pictures I've seen, it's so isolated. I think it's cool when people do the camping events and stuff there, and like uh, big festivals that have been put on in the past, like some of the metal fest they've done in Muncie. It's crazy how many people in the they can get out there just to kind of have this cool experience with the, just like the musicians and with people within the community that just love to support them. Yeah. So I think it's really neat that you're putting on. So what have you learned, um, kind of switching gears of just being an artist and now also you know being a book, booker, being you know an event coordinator, kind of incorporating all that and your music. What do you think the challenges or things that you like better about it or like the give or takes? I mean, uh, honestly, uh, 
it kind of ties in with my song I played earlier, Ego. Um, so e Ego's a uh, song really about just how your own ego can be in the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like the, it's the one that's causing the problems is your ego. You know, like if you took a step back and tried to, you know, look at what was better for everybody involved, that would usually solve the problem. But you're so focused on what you want and what you desire in that moment. Um, so that's the biggest thing about planning this stuff is like, you know, you can't you can't really think about like what I want, Dylan, as a musician, mm -hmm. as a part of this festival. Like I have to think about what is going to make everybody happy and what is going to make everything work and all the pieces fall together. That way, everybody can get up and play the set that they feel like they want to play and they can play and you know at the right time they can play and you know all, all these moving pieces. You know, because you know musicians, they it's everybody. Everybody has their life, right? Mm -hmm. So. Everybody has, you know, their own things that they need to make that day happen for them. So whenever you're dealing with that many different egos, you got to kind of put yours to the side for sure. It, it really <laughs> comes to that. I've been running events for gosh, since 2016. I was like, putting on house shows, and I, I now get paid to do what I run events uh, in Middletown at the winery, and. You know, you definitely got to see what's going to work for your clientele or work for your audience or who you want to cater it to. And the, to me, the best stuff about running events, doing things like this, hosting radio shows, or just even you guys might do the same thing after gigs. And the biggest thing after all that is just the reflection afterwards. Um, you know, like what worked, what didn't work, how can I improve, but also just who enjoyed and the great thing is usually with events and things like that, even if it might have been your best set or if you feel like, you know, crowd was liking your things, you're still impacting people. And sometimes I feel like at nights, like I've done things where sometimes I was on air and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, I wonder if anyone listened tonight or, you know, what, you know, but there's still that one person or that group in the audience or something that really connected to what you're showcasing. I remember just kind of walking around sometimes. I would have random Jimmy John drivers a month. Like, I listen to you every night. Like you said, like when I come, I'm like, oh, like that's cool. Like when I'm making deliveries, you know, that's yeah. super neat. And it's just to bring people over like this, like not only have we had you come from Goshen, you come from Muncie, we've had somebody come from South Bend um, that helped run sound. He's gonna be coming back uh, next month, actually. Levi Lumberjack will be, Lamberjack will be here. Um, but we've also had people that came all the way from like the north side or south side of Indy. So it's just nice that we're bringing people in and like connecting and then also showcasing what's been around here. Jess Jones and Katie Joe, which are both back there. They were our first performance and really helped booking the artists with this as well as we all do. Yeah. Katie reached out to both you guys. Yeah. And it's just really cool to see what we can do with friends that we have in the scene. Um, my last question will kind of tie in and kind of get you guys back into performing here for the night is, and we talked a little bit about this previously, but we can hone in on this more, is how can we as a musical community uh, progress the arts and have the artists and musicians flourish and Anderson are also just kind of wherever you're at, like in Indiana as a whole. What do you think impacts and what things we could do to kind of progress the arts? Just relating, mm -hmm. just trying to find the thing that people can relate to. I mean, as really sad Dave Moore that song is, a lot of people sadly can relate to mm -hmm. life and death and they've lost a loved mm -hmm. one and they feel exactly what the chorus, the chorus hits with people who've lost a loved one, unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, I think my responsibility as an artist is to find that piece that I can relate with my own life, with the people that I feel like are in front of me. Mm -hmm. In terms of the community, I mean, just supporting artists, but also, I, I have to say it, supporting queer artists. Yeah, absolutely. Supporting uh, female artists. Um, that's something that, at least we're up where I'm at, and I'm, it's, it's tough. It's a very male-dominated area up there, yeah. and it's tough to tap into that scene um, as a female and especially a queer female. You just know how it is. And, and so, I mean, yeah, just supporting not just males, females, everyone, no matter who they are, because if they've got that relatable piece, that's what art is, right? That's what an art is. That you need the representation piece. is so important. Sure, and yeah. This year with booking, uh, with events, what I was doing at the wine, what I loved about yeah. this year is I had the biggest variety. Because um, my, my, my biggest issue was when I started booking there and I was like, the list I was given, I was like, there's a lot of male performers. Yeah. And this past year, I've probably had six, seven, maybe 10 female performers. That's awesome. that was, and I'm like, this is awesome. We've yeah. also got more representation within the LGBTQ, which is cool. Yeah. And it's just nice just, you know, getting that out there. My biggest thing, I feel like what can grow a community, I've been talking for months with, uh, with Greg about this and other people that I associate with is, um, we, there's events that go on across the way here at this big town center. 
and they really pull uh, big things, and then when they come, it's like they're just trying to support that, and then it's end. My vision is to get access to that stage, put on a big event, DIY for the scene, have your younger kids, have your more seasoned veterans, people playing original music, and then get local businesses and bars support, and everyone, you know, if you want to drink, go support this business, that, and then come back and come right. together to support everything to really have the community kind of grow. Um, and that's something I really want to try to get a connection with and try to make happen, because I feel like that stage rarely gets used. I pr it probably gets used just for the shows they do a couple times a month, and maybe five other times at that, when it's like, that could be used so much uh, often and just give access to a community. I even, I actually just played a, like a festival just like that, it's called mm. Arts on the Mill Race, and, and I have never, you know, you play a gig and there, oftentimes you're like, nobody was listening, nobody gave mm. a crap what I was playing, uh, and you're like super sentimental, and like, that was like one of the most receptive stages I had been on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this one's pretty close to it. Because it was all a bunch of artists and they were like, no covers, only originals. We want to hear exactly what you have to say. Make it be sappy if it's sappy. Like, like it was just a pure celebration of the artists and it was really cool to be a part of. So that'd be awesome. Uh, awesome, yeah. So Dylan, what do you have to weigh in on this before I start talking more? <laughs> um, so honestly, I just, I just want to take that last little bit. Yeah. A pure celebration of artists. I feel like that's, that's really... Uh, what's going to make the greatest impact in our community is where we really uplift the people that really make this happen. I mean, and you know, that, that's, that's a pure celebration of the artists, but it's also, you know, realizing everybody else that's involved with it, the people that coordinate the mm -hmm. events and, you know, all the, all the background stuff, like um, making people feel like they belong in the community. Yeah. See, that's the, that's the big part of it is that, you know, we talk a lot about community um, and us, we know we're a part of the community, right? And, and we're talking out to people, and we, in our heads, are including them, but are they including themselves, yeah. Yeah. right? So that's the big part is, is like, you know, re really reaching out to uh, individuals and, you know, seeing, like, what they thought, you know, like the quiet guy in the room that didn't really have anybody to talk to, you know, asking, like, hey, man, what would you think? Or... You know, like you liking this, or just asking a question. You real, you may not realize the quiet guy might be the most talkative guy by the end of the night because mm -hmm. he just had one person right. actually stop and talk to him. Yeah. So I feel like that's a that that's really the the biggest impact on, on the community is just you know actually forming community by making sure you reach out to people and you know including them. Um, I think that's really important with that. Absolutely. Let's give a round of applause, guys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, I inclusion and, and all that is important. And I think when you touched on, which mentioning, you know, just that single person sitting alone, I feel like sometimes make the biggest impact on an artist when you go up and talk to him afterwards. And another thing I think would be cool to tie in with the Indiana scene, I think would be something great to do. Um, and I wanted to go to it this past year in Michigan, and I'm going to go to it next year. Um, but in, I think I want to say it was Lansing, there was some, some part of Michigan, they do a thing called Stoop Fest. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah so, so you, both of you should reach out when they take submissions. They take artists from Indiana, but it's nothing but DIY artists all from like Indiana, Ohio, or other states, and they come in and they play at people's houses in their backyard, they play at local yeah. bars, and they have a stage, and it goes for three days, it's like 50 bucks or something if that a person, they have posters and stuff for it, and then they get like really bigger kind of like DIY artists that will perform. Uh, with you being into ska, you know the guy that does Ska Tune Network? He yeah. went and did his solo stuff there and actually oh. performed, and performed more unique and originals and stuff right. with it. Uh, awesome. And they, so they get like some little bigger hits like that, but then the majority of like the 50 other acts are all local. Yeah. And I think that's something really cool and something that like, you know, why can't we do that here in Anderson? Or why can't we do that and, you know, more often in Indy and things? And Indy, you know, they've gotten better. They do the All In Festival, which is nice to kind of include some kind of bigger acts, and, you know, and then they've done some stuff uh, oh, with the Garfield Park. They've done some things with that occasionally, but like, sometimes I want it, you know, more centered for the arts, about the arts, when sometimes I feel like some things it's hard where you blur the line where it's like, it's a cash grab. Sure. Like, and, and I know that that can be like an iffy word sometimes, but I feel like sometimes people will, you know, people want music or like, a bar opens up, like, oh, I'm going to start having performers. But they don't build that community. They just put the artists on stage, pay whatever they want, maybe get them a water, but sure. don't, like, try to support and care for them. I feel like the biggest thing when you're a venue 
or when you're having an artist, you gotta roll out the hospitality, you gotta roll out the friendliness, you gotta, you know, because you're like, you're working for us tonight, we're working together, this, we're putting on something magical, and I feel like people kind of forget to put that sincerity into it. Yeah, yeah. So anything else you guys wanna to add to that, or we wanna kick up and kinda of end up the night with some more tunes? I'd love to play. Love that, love to play? All right, guys, this Let's has been it. the interview portion here, all right. <laughs> Again, I have been your host, Hunter Knight. This is the A-Town Special, a.k.a. singer-songwriter. Remember to form a unity to jumpstart a better community, and as always, make your 1% count.